to be educated, but I'm so frustrated. Hello to my loneliness. This fake MV7 is so good that no one has noticed that the MV7 is being replicated. <laughs> Even from a site like AliExpress that sells fake shore mics, a lot of those customers are leaving reviews swearing that the MV7 that they paid $90 to $100 for is authentic. This is one of those items that can only be identified by doing a side-by-side -side comparison and even so, it's still a little bit more complicated. The fake is made in China and the real one is also made in China. The packaging seems to look identical from the front and has about the same color tone. The fonts and sizes all look about the same apart from the picture on the side. The inside is exactly the same. Everything is laid out the same with the same accessories. This is by far the best mass produced fake shore mic available. The mic has the same box and accessories and everything else looks exactly the same as the genuine. Okay, so now we are on a fake microphone. The first noticeable difference is the XLR connection. The real one comes with a neutral connector and the fake one is simply left plain. Neutral connectors and Mogami cables are replicated in China so easily so they could have easily added it if they wanted to. The pop filters feel about the same with the genuine being slightly stiffer but the top is very soft on the real one and the fake one is denser which makes the fake a little bit better because the real one picks up a lot of plosives. The capsule guards look exactly the same, only at a close-up is when you see a small difference and this pretty much goes for everything else. You need a close-up and you need a real one in hand to spot any differences. Both the fake and the genuine are made in China, only one costs about 230 and the other one is about 80 bucks. Big difference in price, but is there any difference in quality? So up to now you've heard the real one and now you're listening to the fake one and let me know below if you notice any difference between the two. Opening the mics up and the capsules look about the same size, the only difference that stands out is that the fake has two green wires instead of a green and yellow wire. Also I, I need to mention something I found out after making this video is that the capsule turns freely and it just pops out if, you, if it's not held by the cover, whereas on the real one it's very solid and doesn't move even when pulling on it. Although from the outside the fake may look very similar, taking a look inside and it's a different story. The motherboard and chips are completely different. Also I find it funny that the fakes always tend to take an extra step and paint the underside while the real ones are always left unfinished. So that's a tell itself. If the inside is painted black, it's fake. If it's a metal finish, it's more likely an authentic. There is nothing about this mic that screams fake. However, there is one noticeable difference when using the mics and that's the headphone jack. Although they both look the same, the real one works much better because when using the fake as a USB mic and with the headphones connected directly to the mic, the vocals will sound very high and not as deep as the real one. But if I play the recording without the headphones connected to the mic, it will sound much better than what was coming out the headphones. One big difference that's surprisingly better on the fake is the micro USB connection. The real one is known for having a very weak port that's guaranteed to break off. From day one you can feel a lot of play which is never a good sign. On the fake it's super solid when I wiggle the cord, nothing moves, not even a tiny bit. You can see the difference in the connection and also the USB cord that comes with the real one broke off actually in the mic the first time I used it. I don't understand why Shure still haven't addressed the weak micro USB connection but yet the fakes have solved it. It absolutely makes no sense because the MV7X was released years back which is the same mic as the MV7. The only difference is they added a USB connection on the MV7X and called it the MV7. And that's the same thing the fakers did too. The only reason people buy the MV7 is solely and only for the USB feature. If you're thinking about getting the MV7 and you're planning on using it with the XLR connection, you would simply be wasting your money because the MV7X can do the same thing and it's about $100 cheaper. The touch response is very similar, they both suck, but the response is just about the same. The colors on the LED lights are slightly different when the orange light is on, but the green color looks to be spot on. What makes the fake MV7 impossible to spot is that not only can you register the fake mic in the Shores website, which by the way tells you to be very careful of fakes because even they can't tell the difference anymore. The fake can also run with the Shure's desktop and iPad app and on the app it's picked up as a genuine MV7. The app even lets you update the mic whenever there's an update release. 
pretty much everything that you can do with the real mic, you can do with this fake one. And without a real one for comparison to notice the small details, it's really hard to spot the fake, especially if you're not looking for it. If you're trying to buy any Shure mic like the MV7 and SM7B, and you never heard your own voice using the real mics, you're going to be easily fooled into buying a fake. And when you do try it, you're either going to love it or hate it, just like any other mic. Thank you.